Welcome to this webinar about our new product TF6105, OPC UA PubSub. There are options for you to submit any questions that, that you may have. In the GoToWebinar software, please use the dialog area on the right side to submit your questions. You can also submit your questions in an email to meet at backoff.com. We will try to answer all of the questions on the fly during this presentation, but should there be any open questions that we were not able to answer during the webinar, we will contact you afterwards on the email address that you have used to register for the webinar. At Back of Automation, we believe in offering an open platform with many connectivity options for connecting your automation application with other devices all the way to an ERP system and the cloud. This is why we now offer more than 30 communication protocols in our product portfolio. And we continue to implement additional communication protocols because the automation world evolves. For example, we have just implemented an HTTP or HTTPS client to allow our customers to access RESTful web services from within their PLC application. OPC UA is another important communication technology which we offer in different products which we will introduce later on. During the last few years, OPC UA has seen a very high adoption rate across different industries, and it can be seen as the standard that enables industrial interoperability with integrated security mechanisms and information modeli uh, modeling possibilities. Let's have a look at our history with OPC UA as a technology and the OPC Foundation in general. Everything started in the year 1998, in which Beckhoff became a member of the OPC Foundation and also released its first OPC-related product. Back in the days, this was the COM-based TwinCAT OPC DA server, which was based on the OPC DA standard. A few years later, in 2006, OPC UA has been introduced as a technology and the first version of the OPC UA specification has been released. And in the same year, Beckhoff has announced and promoted a prototype, a OPC UA server prototype, which enabled access to variables from the TwinCat real-time via OPC UA. Since then, over the years, um, Beckhoff and the, has pushed um, and promoted OPC UA as a technology together with the OPC Foundation and other vendors to further enhance this standard. Since 2010, Beckhoff employees uh, have a very active part inside of the OPC Foundation, whether this is in, in an active working group for companion specifications or in the OPC UA base working groups to define the standard. For example, a Beckhoff employee got elected as the president for OPC Europe and later became global president of the OPC Foundation. Multiple Beckhoff employees have joined different OPC UA working groups to collaborate with other vendors, for example, to create companion specifications for different industry branches. And one particular milestone that is of interest is our involvement inside of the OPC Foundation within the OPC UA PubSub working group. And this is why we were able to, um, to show a first OPC UA PubSub prototype in 2016, um, which was already based on a TwinCat real-time driver and we will further dive into that right now. But let me first give you a short overview about the different layers in which we have implemented OPC UA into our products. Let's have a look at the automation level where, in which our controllers perform their duty. Every back of controller is equipped um, with a free of charge OPC UA server called the IPC Diagnostic Server and which offers diagnostics information about the industry PC. This can be CPU temperature, mainboard temperature, fan speed, smart information from your hard disk and, and much more. In addition, we also have our TwinCAT OPC UA client and server applications which offer OPC UA access to or from the TwinCAT real time. And those applications um, will not be part of this webinar because we want to concentrate on OPC UA pubs up for now. And because of the internal communication architecture of TwinCAT, these applications can also be installed and operated on an edge device, for example, our C6000 uh, uh, IPC series. For example, if you want to retrofit existing machines in a brownfield scenario. With TwinCAT HMI, we have our own HTML5-based uh, web visualization. And this um, TwinCAT HMI system also comes with an integrated OPC UA client to access remote servers in order to display and visualize uh, their data values. In addition, we also have our TwinCAT scope, um, which also has an integrated OPC UA client, which you can use to connect through third-party devices in order to add them to your charting uh, diagnostics uh, area. 
On the field level, we have introduced uh, many, many years ago a bus coupler with an integrated OPC UA server that offers easy, secure and standardized access to I.O. data points. The idea behind that is that we wanted to enable our customers to have an, an easy way of configuring I.O. terminals um, and, and accessing their data via OPC UA. And finally, of course, we have products that allow you to establish connectivity with the cloud based on OPC UA pops up, for example, via MQTT. OPC UA pops up applications are decoupled based on publisher subscriber communication patterns. Applications can therefore assume the role of a publisher and or subscriber in order to send or receive messages. Publisher applications can send messages to a so-called message-oriented uh, middleware without any knowledge of what, if any, subscribers there may be. In a similar fashion, subscribers express their interest in specific types of data and process incoming messages that contain this data without knowledge of what publishers there might be. In order to address a large number of use cases, OPC UA PubSub supports two different message-oriented middleware variants. The first variant is brokerless, which means that the message-oriented middleware is based on the network infrastructure that is able to route datagram-based messages. In this variant, publishers and subscribers usually use datagram protocols like UDP. Here in this example, you see that the, that the address information is using a UDP multicast group in order to exchange messages. The second variant is broker-based, which means that the message-oriented middleware is a message broker that is responsible to route messages back and forth. Publishers and subscribers usually use standard messaging protocols like AMQP or also MQTT to communicate with the message broker. In order to support both efficient communication on the wire and easy interpretation of the message content by other applications, PubSub not um, only sp uh, specifies a binary data uh, format, but also an ASCII-based JSON data format. The JSON format is also specified and in included in the OPC UA PubSub specification. The important thing to note here is that our Twinket OPC UA PubSub implementation will have both variants available as a native Twinket driver, which means that you can use both transports natively from within your Twinket application and you can freely choose and configure if you want to use binary message encoding or JSON message encoding. So how does this look like in Twinket? So first of all, you need to add a so-called OPC UA real-time device. Which, you will, which can be found in the Twinket I.O. device list. So right here you will see, okay, I have a category called OPC UA, and below that you will find the real-time OPC UA device. After that, you can decide whether you want to add a publisher or a subscriber module. And the corresponding settings page allows you to set different parameters for the communication. For example, you can choose which transport protocol you would like to use, whether you want to use UDP or MQTT for the communication. You can specify the address settings, for example, the UDP multicast address or the address of the message broker. And you can specify much more. You can specify security-related settings, for example, the address of the key server or TLS-related settings for MQTT and much more. And last but not least, you can add variables to the publisher or subscriber datasets, which you can then link with variables from your PSC. So in total, it's a very easy configuration instead of writing code. So you can add, so you can really focus on developing your PSC application instead of worrying about how to establish an OPC UA connection, how to, to create the message uh, content, etc. So you can really focus on your application and all you need to do is uh, create the OPC UA real-time device together with the publishers and subscribers, make some settings here, and then you're ready to go and ready to communicate via OPC UA PubSub. But OPC UA PubSub not only specifies the transport of data, but also the configuration, which is handled via classic OPC UA client-server architecture. The idea behind that is that within its address space, an OPC UA server has the information about any running OPC UA PubSub configuration, so that clients can access this information to find out which data sets are there, which variables are included in a data set, and uh, which publishing interval has been configured, um, etc. Let's take the following scenario as an example. Here on the left-hand side, we have a backoff controller, CX5140, 
which has a PSC runtime and the Twinkit OPC UA PubSub product installed and configured. The OPC UA PubSub driver should act as an OPC UA publisher via a UDP multicast group. The corresponding configuration has been made inside of the Twinkit configuration environment, the Twinkit XAE. And here you will see, okay, I have my OPC UA real-time device, I have a publisher, I have a data set, and I have three variables that should be published um, by the, by the real-time driver in the background. So this information uh, is now also displayed and made available in the address space of our Twinket OPC UA server. Here you will see the configured data sets as well as the parameters and variables. So for example, you will see, okay, there is a data set and there are some, some properties and methods below and of course the variables that are published um, by the driver together with their corresponding data types. So an OPC UA client may now take this information to create a corresponding subscriber. And if he wants, he can also modify the, this PubSub configuration. So for example, here, our third-party device can act as an OPC UA client, read the PubSub configuration from our server, and then create a corresponding OPC UA subscriber that is subscribing to the data set that's getting published. On the last slide, we have seen that Twinket presents its OPC UA PubSub configuration via the Twinket OPC UA server, and that this configuration can not only be read by an OPC UA client, but also modified by an OPC UA client. For example, if the client wants to add or remove variables from a data set. For example, this only works, uh, of course, um, only if the client has the proper access permissions, which can be um, set inside of the Twinket OPC UA server. So the next question would be how to scan in remote OPC UA servers that maybe have a PubSub configuration available in their address space. So in this example, we have um, a third party OPC UA server that has the information about a publisher. So um, that is also publishing information via OPC UA PubSub. So in, in the address space of the server, you will see that there is a published data set and that there are three variables that are getting published um, by the publisher device. Um, there is one variable which has the data type float, one variable with data type in 16, and one variable with data type in 32. So within our Twinket OPC UA PubSub product, we have created a so-called publisher discovery control. And using this control, you can connect to the remote server and select the detected publishers so that they are being added to the process image of the OPC UA PubSub device. So in that case, a corresponding subscriber device is added to the Twinket configuration. And you see that here, we again have our OPC UA real-time device. We have a publisher, uh, a subscriber below that, and we have the, sub the data set that this subscriber should subscribe to in order to receive the variable information. So everything is, is happening automatically. And again, you don't have to worry about uh, developing any uh, fancy uh, OPC UA code or anything, you can really focus on your PSC application. So right now we have only covered the M2M communication part of OPC UA PubSub, meaning that the communication happens mostly within local network boundaries, for example via UDP. But I would also like to give you an example on how communication with the cloud could look like uh, based on OPC UA PubSub. In this example here, uh, I have a backoff controller that runs Twinket together with our Twinket OPC UA PubSub uh, product. The product has been configured to publish a data set um, containing three different variables. And you also see a screenshot of the PSC application here. So basically, it's just two counter variables, one of type int, one of type lreal, and I have a Boolean variable that's just toggling every PSC cycle. So the publisher device should now connect to the cloud service AWS IoT Core, which is a managed MQTT message broker service on Amazon Web Services. And in this example, we want to use JSON as the PubSub encoding. So as an MQTT client that subscribes to the data, I have used AWS IoT Test Client, which is a web-based MQTT client that can subscribe to the data and display it here on the AWS Management Console. So here in this video snippet, you can see that the OPC UA PubSub messages that are being published by our device come in very frequently and come in at, in the OPC UA PubSub JSON format. So as an alternative, you can of course also use OPC UA PubSub for communication via our Twinket Cloud Engineering offering. Twinket Cloud Engineering comes with an integrated MQTT message broker that allows to route messages back and forth between client applications. So the scenario that I have here is uh, identical. 
um, to the one on the previous slide. So again, we have a PSC application running here on our device. We have a Twinket OPC UA PubSub uh, device configured as a, as a publisher um, that connects to our message broker in Twinket Cloud Engineering. And as an MQTT client, I have used a command line based client um, in order to subscribe to the data and displace the data here on the console. So, but again, the same, um, the same output as on the, in the previous scenario, um, just via a different message broker. Because Twincat, or the, the, because the OPC UA PubSub specification offers a lot of mandatory and optional functionalities, I would like to give you an overview about which aspects uh, we have implemented so far and especially for the first release of our product. So during this presentation, we have seen that we have an OPC UA pub publisher subscriber device which comes as a native Twinket 3 real-time driver. We also saw that we provide or will provide support for UDP and MQTT transport. Um, we will also support um, the different message encoding formats um, that there are, so the UADP raw format or the variant encoding and also the JSON format. Um, we will support uh, very uh, deep technical functionalities like chunking, IP fragmentation, uh, data keyframes, um, delta frames, keep alive. So we will support all that, of course. Uh, we will also support um, the PubSub security. For example, if you want to sign messages or encrypt messages, uh, we will support that for pre-shared secret and a local um, key server. Uh, we will support MQTT versions 3.1.1 and also 5.0. We will support um, the TLS um, for MQTT security. And of course, we have also seen during this presentation that we will support the OPC UA PubSub configuration interface um, in our Twinket OPC UA server application. So the most um, Interesting question for you probably is, okay, when will this be available? When will this be released, this new product? So the release will be together with uh, Twinket 3.1 build 4026, which is expected to arrive in the first quarter of 2022. So at this point, I would like to thank all of you for joining us for this webinar. I wish you a wonderful day and uh, yeah, see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye. <laughs>